But anyway, we do have a lot of questions from the audience. So if you do. don't mind oh, fielding a few. Sure, be glad. Okay, so, so yeah, be for, for uh, right. some people have asked. We we mentioned. Move the table that, uh, the hall and send all the cables. Got the answer. We're not allowed to use it. Well, why do cell phones? Why are they a problem for the telescope operation? Just a guy in the circle. We have uh, a lot of yeah. telescopes up here on our campus, yeah, and they, um, they they look in different wavelengths. Well, of light, for example, here we are at the IRTF. It looks at infrared radiation. Um, we also have a centimeter telescope. It looks like a little bit longer wavelengths and microwave wavelengths. And so, uh, so it looks like cellular modes uh, transmit uh, wavelengths that would cause uh, noise or disruption in some of these uh, wavelengths. Now, yeah, it's, 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 true that it's noise and disruption. That's, that's bad, not only because it's noise and disruption. Uh, if they don't notice that, that could be misinterpreted in the data and actually cause all the research. Is that possible? <laughs> I don't really know. I suppose that's possible. I'm sorry. I've always wanted to be on the inside. Well, maybe oh, it's true. Okay, well, that, uh, yeah. uh, spurious signals can look like data sometimes. Well, another question that we had, this is one that we've, we've had a lot, and so it did bear some discussion. We've talked a lot about the different spectrum telescopes yeah, that we use, calcium K, hydrogen alpha, uh, white light, things like that. And um, a lot of our viewers just don't understand what we're, we're meaning. So my I'm saying that. I know I don't understand what we're meaning. I'm just here, you know, having a good time. But uh, maybe you can well, show some time. Sure, well, I'm just here having a good time, too. You know, uh, Sean, you're going to sit on a circle. Uh, That's we're actually Shining looking at the sun in different wavelengths of light. Good. Oh. Now, the uh, what we call, what does that mean? Okay. Okay. Well, um, I'm sorry. I, I, as we know, it's known for about um, uh, maybe uh, not too much more than 100 years or so. Life in cages is a way. And the other thing I have to bring it in. That's for another show. Life was first understood as something that was probably a lot like sound waves. Mm. Um, and of course, it's a little different than sound like waves because it doesn't need a medium to propagate through. Um, but uh, you can think of if you drop a uh, cup full into water, you can see the waves rippling. It's kind of like it's kind of like that, you know, or rippling. Yeah. Okay, so if if we're looking at different waves of light, then the calcium K being one wavelength and, and uh, H alpha and one wavelength, what is the benefit of looking at those different wavelengths? Sure. Um, well, first of all, the hydrogen alpha is uh, a red wavelength. It occurs in uh, uh, sure. what it is, uh, 65, uh, 659 meters or something. Um, calcium K is in the blue, 39, 390 meters. And as you look at different wavelengths, you're also sensing at different levels of the sun. Um, uh, different temperatures produce different uh, uh, wavelengths or frequencies of light. And so we can see a little bit different parts of the sun. The universe in general looks different depending on the color of the light that you look at it in. And uh, so we can get a little di bit different definition by looking at these different uh, wavelength or frequency ranges. Okay, so that's what we're getting. Not, not only is it different pretty pictures for us, uh, actually when the scientists look at it, they learn different things looking at it. The different spectrums. That, that's absolutely right. And so that's one reason it's very important for us to get up above the atmosphere. We're up above a lot of the atmosphere here, and it's and we're noticing it. It's way part of the atmosphere because I'm feeling like if it is, uh, we got to try to be enough down on this. I'm telling you, I don't know if the audience can sense it, but it, it's it's uh, it's uh, winter conditions up here. It's freezing. That's what yeah. it is. It's, it's freezing. <laughs> from a character named Roman out in, in Ohio, and what, what he wanted to know what was, it, it, is does the Earth cool maybe as a result of the sun, uh, Venus transiting the sun? Now, I don't know the answer to that question, but I can say right now, it's cool here. We're in the blinding light of the sun, but it, the temperatures are very chilly. I don't know if that's a result of the transit. Probably not a result of the transit. It's a result of the fact that um, the primary cooling uh, 
<laughs> in the uh, lower because atmosphere where we are is by heating the surface of the earth and the surface the of the earth heating the atmosphere. So as we go up higher and higher, we get colder and colder at that point than other physics takes place. Um, but to answer, uh, to answer his question, um, Venus uh, appears to us in this transit to be about one thirtieth the diameter of the sun. For, you, for the amateur astronomers uh, and scientists watching, it's about one arc minute in diameter. And so, in terms of the area of the sun, that's approximately uh, one nine hundred the area of the sun, or roughly a tenth of a percent. Okay, now that's interesting because I had a conversation with a super solar physicist Holly Gilbert about this exact same issue, and she said it's interesting during an eclipse. Before we get you on the you might in regional area sense a slight change in temperature because you're in shadow. But but she went on to say that that we're because of distance and everything else. We're probably not even feeling or, or getting a shadow of Venus on Earth's surface. That's right. Yeah, Venus is so much further away, uh, so much uh, um, smaller in terms of uh, apparent angular size, um, and of course it's only in, in a total solar eclipse you're blocking out all of the sun, uh, and Venus is only blocking out about 0.1 percent. So. It's so, unlikely that we're going to be able to measure any effect uh, uh, in temperature from the Venus transit. Well, gotcha. it's just good to rule that out. So, you know, now it's just, you know, something else. Yeah. Franklin, you got another question? Uh, it's Venus is so far. Uh, we have one of our viewers uh, ask a question. How long does it take for the images that we're actually seeing of the Venus in the sun to get to the Earth? Oh, wow. oh, that's a great That's right. Um, uh, we live in an age where we know that it takes light time to travel. JCDC part of this. I guess we're here. 1600, I think, uh, for the light. They used to think that uh, light was instantaneous. But the distance to the sun from the Earth is um, about 150 million kilometers. Um, Venus is about, you know, 0.7 uh, of that distance. So let's call it, for the record, the altitude is why we're allowing you to go. It takes light about um, a little over eight minutes to reach the Earth. And so uh, probably something like uh, um, a third of that. So you know, a little less than three minutes. From Venus. Gotcha, right. Okay. From Venus. Gotcha, so still eight minutes from the sun. Eight, 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 eight the third minutes from the sun. Yeah, yeah. I've got a little yeah. question now. Yeah. One viewers wants to know yeah. what is the small dot? You know, we it's can't see the, the, uh, uh, the yeah. monitor right now the that is on the surface of the sun that appears to be the same size as Venus. Yeah. Well, I would imagine it's Venus. No, above Venus. It's around. There are spots on the sun, surface of the sun. Oh, okay. Well, um, uh, and others have talked about um, this. We are in a period of very high solar activity here, which means that we should be seeing a lot of sunspots, and we are in fact today. Sunspots are local disturbances on the sun, relatively cool uh, compared to the rest of the surface. Um, and so, only about. Um, they appear dark. Some of them uh, can be quite Yeah, and it's interesting because uh, there is lots of solar activity. Uh, there Man. could be other yeah, issues as well. I think somebody was uh, suggesting uh, clean your monitor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, but there is so there are solar uh, flares and solar activity happening all of the time. So we get that loaded up. But we're at still the and, maximum, uh, which we talked about earlier, so it's like we're still to that uh, that, That's right. Um, oh, good. We're still hoping for a good solar player. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, we plug that into your computer. Not that we're going to promote emotional breakdowns, but she's promised a good cry if, if there's a solar flare while Venus is, is crossing. So, uh, you know, we want to see if she's. Hey, one final uh, question, Lou. We are 
up here on this on the north scale and uh, when we Pardon? talk about uh, being exposed to the sun um, and uh, the elements, no, how much water are we exposed? I'm trying to think of very much. Well, we're up about a good part of the Earth's atmosphere here. Very much. Thankfully, we have a, not only a magnetosphere to protect us, but an atmosphere. But our atmosphere figures out a lot of uh, radiation from the sun that would otherwise reach the surface of the earth and would be really bad for living things. Uh, gamma rays, x-rays, and most ultraviolet light as well as a lot of infrared light because of water absorption. Um, up here we're getting um, uh, a lot of ultraviolet radiation. Uh, probably um, about six, well, if, if, if there were no gold things repressing these light, we get about 60% more to UVB than at, the, at the sea level. But probably we're getting with all this reflecting some, I'm guessing about 100% more UV. I, I would uh, challenge John that to raise that to 150%. <laughs> but however, and I just want to let my wife know yes, I did apply. Sunscreen literally on my face today, so I'm protected. But I probably need to reapply because we've got blinding levels of UV bouncing off this building blood right into the clinic. Huh? Thinking about uh, blood and, blood. and the skin too, which is what we're really protecting. I'm rambling, but that's good because uh, I'm That's where Richard comes in. Yeah, he was taking a break from my health and yes. to others. But so what we want to do so is Adam is look at the other trust him up, but he's too stupid to know. Hopefully they can bring this up while I go hit the oxygen tank. <laughs> it's now the man that's had more bypasses and you're street. watching live yeah. Venus Trans in 2012 on NASA. Oh, it's dense. It's it's like bypass. Um, Thanks, Lou. And and the the bad news that Aaron was saying that they got is that they told him that he didn't have long to live. That was yeah. back in what March. He's still um so he's of the Illuminati bloodline. So we bring forth Adam who's from Jesus and Martha and the Illuminati. So I've got both sides there and Adam's taken after the mother who is after God, of course. So in the end, God wins. Would, would that be a fair summary? Absolutely. It's all genetic. Yeah. I'll look up some numbers, darling. Eight twenty three, eight twenty one, that era. Yeah, give me an exact contact. About twelve seventeen. Eight eleven. Eight eleven. Eight eleven in Greek. Dissolutely, riotous in Greek. Cluster of grapes. A bunch of grapes or other fruit. Okay, 829. In Hebrew is a measured portion, portion, good piece. Okay, 830. Well, we'll do it in Greek. 830, 829 in Greek is self-willed, arrogant, self-pleasing, and then 830 is of own accord, willing of self, voluntary, self-chosen. Okay. Now, I'll run this right back. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do there is a, a sun flare coming around. And the moment it lines up with a sun flare, yeah. that's what we're looking for. All right. 